Hi everyone, my name is Judy Cole and I'm happy today to be able to share with you another easy recipe that you can prepare at home and it's called the Strawberry Chocolate and Cheese Delight Now first, the method is really simple All we need to do is to, is to stir all the wet ingredients together and then combine with the dry ingredients Let's first take a look at the ingredients that we have Now as the recipe uh, indicates in the first step we sure will be having a coffee the first thing we're going to do is to stir the sugar okay so I've got all my ingredients all conveniently packed into this sugar egg just an egg medium sized egg okay egg melted butter now here I'm actually using unsalted premium anchor butter what you can do is to cut and the, the butter into pieces and then you can microwave it. And another way is to just put it into your um, Ziploc bag for the butter and then pop the whole thing into the microwave and then it will be melted very easily. Or you can do it directly over uh, the fire, place the butter in the saucepan and just heat it up gently. So what we have here is the sugar, eggs, melted butter, okay, milk. I'm using anchor milk again, okay. So now uh, the milk comes from the cows that feed on grass, so they are grass fed, and which is a natural way where cows roam happily in the fields, eating the grass. And that's why, if you take a look at the milk, the milk is slightly yellowish it has a slight yellow tinge as in all the anchor products whether it's cream or cheese chlorophyll in the grass okay so what we have here would be the milk so i'm going to pour in the milk and we're going to use a whisk now if you like you may also want to add a little bit of vanilla essence but that's that's actually optional you can put a bit of vanilla essence and then a little bit of salt as well uh, to give it a little bit of taste okay to enhance the taste although it's not really necessary uh, you can put just a pinch of salt or you can use also the salted butter that anchor also has otherwise unsalted butter is fine okay so what we do is that we stir all the ingredients together like this to somewhat dissolve most of the sugar just stir until it dissolves okay. if you we're going to sieve the flour directly into the wet ingredients so I've got a, a sieve over here and I'm gonna put in the flour we are using plain flour which is medium protein flour so I'm actually using unbleached uh, premium Japanese flour in our uh, company that's what we use okay so we've got flour a teaspoon of baking powder okay so yeah. now when it comes to baking the measurements are quite exact unlike cooking where you could like uh, make an estimate it's always good to ensure that your ingredients are accurate so use a teaspoon okay just and then flatten it okay make sure it's flattened and then you place it and we are going to put in a little bit of baking soda now the reason why baking soda is often added into chocolate cake uh, one reason is that the pH level of baking soda is above 7 which makes it more alkaline so that tends to darken the look of the cho chocolate cake uh, giving the impression that it's more chocolatey we, as mentioned we normally eat we eat with our eyes so the first thing we look at it when it looks chocolatey we think it's already very chocolatey so that's why we add a little bit of uh, baking soda at the same time the baking soda will also react with the liquid in the ingredients so that carbon dioxide is released now when carbon dioxide is released it helps to raise the cake so baking soda is alkaline and we add a little bit of baking powder uh, baking powder has got both the acid and the alkaline now this is the science behind baking so now what we do as well 
we, uh, we, we want the chocolate cake, so don't forget the cocoa powder already wait for me conveniently in a pack like this. So we put in the cocoa powder and then we sieve it okay, directly. Now I sieve it directly into my liquid ingredients so that later on when we combine everything together, it's all done in one bowl. And then when you wash, you only wash one bowl. So that makes your job a little bit easier. So we sieve. The reason why we sieve is because we want to distribute the ingredients evenly like this. So just see and then press it through like this. Okay, should you see? Okay. Alright, and just use a whisk and stir gently. Okay, just stir it till it's just well mixed. Don't over mix. Okay, so that uh, to if you over mix it tends to toughen the cake. Okay, so if you take a look at the ingredients here. What we do is that we stir gently, okay, keep everything in until just combined. So this method makes it really simple and you can do this with your family. So uh, makes it very, very simple indeed, okay. So just stir everything like this, okay. Once it's pretty smooth, uh, not too lumpy, okay, we stop. Uh, you can either use, for example, uh, one easy way to get to get a jug with a spout because the mixture tends to be quite liquid. So just pour into. Now you can either pour this into baking containers like a cupcake container, for example. You know you could get uh, one of these uh, uh, containers and line it with a paper cup so you can get a nice uh, chocolate cake at the end like this uh, but I have this nice molds uh, these are silicon molds actually you can get these uh, a lot in all the shops um, these days or even over uh, the internet but I'm going to use these these are bakeable, freezable and it's easy and it's nice okay so what I do is that since I've already because it, I pour the mixture into here okay you can pour roughly about three quarters full to get the nice gooey chocolatey cake and then we can bake it in the oven now in the meantime I have actually uh, been preheating my oven about 180 degrees top heat bottom heat okay like this So really fun and easy, okay? So actually you can put in any uh, bakeable container, all right? Just that I chose to put it into, uh, into these so that when the cake comes out, it looks like bars of chocolate, all right? And then I'm gonna bake this in the oven for about uh, 20 minutes or so, okay? Now how to know whether it's cooked? Once it's cooked, when you put the wooden skewer in, in the center, it should come out clean. Now the thing to remember is not to over bake your cake. If you over bake, it can turn into, easily turn into biscuit. If you under bake, it will be soft and sticky and may sink when you try to unmold it. So baking is all about observation, understanding the science behind it and understanding also that different ovens will bake at different uh, for uh, uh, different durations, so be very sensitive to it. In in our school here, we have uh, professional three deck oven over here. So in this case, the baking temperature has already been set 180 degrees. I place it in, and it will take roughly about 20 minutes to bake, plus and minus, depending on the oven that you have. Now, if you're baking at home, obviously you wouldn't have uh, such a big that oven, unless you have a home bakery, uh, your oven is probably the built-in oven or the tabletop oven. The same principle uh, applies. You preheat your oven at 180 degrees for about 20 minutes. And if this is the entire uh, interior of your oven, you would have a middle rack, lower rack and upper rack. So what you do is that you bake your cakes in the middle rack. Alright? So once the cakes are done, 
Now it's always good to uh, put it into the freezer for a while before you unmold your cakes. So I brought some that I have already uh, prepared ahead of time. So I'm going to take it out from the freezer. I have left this. Another batch that was baked and then uh, left to cool before I pop it into the oven. Now, cake being cake, sometimes in my rice and uh, get to the top, uh, no worries about it. What you have to do is to trim it. Okay, so I'm going to trim uh, the cake. Okay, so over here, alright, once it's... Now, notice that it goes to the top, so you can always uh, use a knife a serrated knife to trim it okay be careful okay it seems a little bit hard to cut at this moment because i think i've left it in the freezer for a little bit too long okay but no worries the thing is that it's already frozen so it's actually quite easy to to take it out from the and then i can try to trim this down a little bit so that it looks uh, sits nicely okay now all these do not waste, you can easily turn it into cake pop. I will give you some ideas about that. Okay, well, if if it's not frozen so uh, till so firmly, I can actually use a knife like this, use the surface to trim it flat. But okay, so at this moment, I'm going to just trim it down a bit. Sometimes things happen, we forget, we leave it. Okay, mistakes are made, uh, but uh, we. we you can use it like this okay so now I never throw all these because later on I will show you what I can do with them so similarly now reason why I trim is because I want it to fit nicely into this shape all right you see otherwise it looks like a rocking horse okay so just trim it down a little bit so that it sits nicely flat on here okay you see that the color there is a difference partly because as mentioned yeah, it's been left in my freezer a little bit too long so you see the difference uh, because of temperature that later on it will correct by itself and it should be fine okay now in a short while i'm going to um, show you how to make a very nice and delicious cream cheese frosting okay uh, which I'm gonna use to decorate so well uh, if you take a look at these okay so they are all sitting quite nicely like this side by side okay, all the same about the same height so that's the purpose that's the reason why I trim it okay so let's just get some of our things ready now I've got these uh, these are nice Otherwise, you can also place directly here, like this. Okay, so later I will show you more ideas. Now, as mentioned, okay, I'm not going to uh, throw all these. Uh, I'm going to keep all these crumbs that you trim. Uh, and I'm going to just share with you some ideas what you can do with these. Okay, so let's put it into a bowl and take this away. All right. Okay. Now, now for the cream cheese uh, frosting. Now, for the cream cheese frosting, uh, these are the ingredients. Now, this we have uh, cream cheese. Um, I like uh, Anchor Cream Cheese because it has got a traditional, very rich, satisfying taste. Uh, in fact, when I use it to make cheesecake, it's fabulous, alright? For the rich, and it's of course uh, a big stable. Now, I've got my cream cheese over here, so you can either break it up into pieces with your hands. If you take it up from the fridge, do not freeze cream cheese. Uh, the cream cheese comes in 1 kg. Uh, form like this so it can be uh, when you make cheesecake and all that uh, you will find that you can use it very quickly all right so I've got cream cheese here and I've got some icing sugar place them all together and use okay, like a paddle to just paddle 
uh, to just uh, cream it until it's quite smooth. Now be careful, don't put it on high speed, put, put it on low speed. Now this frosting, you can also add colors or whatever you may uh, like to for cleaning, for piping of flowers and all the other stuff. But anyway, over here, uh, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, strawberry jam. Okay, so you can use any of your favorite uh, brands. Uh, I've got a little bit of strawberry jam here, so as to give a little bit of flavor. Okay, to uh, you know, to to that a little bit of uh, slightly tangy kind of taste is always very uh, very appetizing. Makes it more appetizing. So I've got the. Uh, you can either use a spoon. Okay, if you were to use a spoon, it's also fine. You can just use a spoon without using a piping bag like this. Just just a touch of strawberry jam. My uh, this. Uh, because strawberry jam is from Germany, uh, so uh, but you can use any any of your favorite jam. You see, take a look at it. I just place a little bit like this at the base, so that when you bite into this, you have the chocolate. At the same time, you have the cream cheese as well. Now, if you don't have the same mold like I have. You can always break it into a square tin, cut it into rectangles or any other shape and then just brush once it's baked, just brush the top. Use a, uh, a brush and dip into some strawberry jam and just brush the top. That will also do, uh, do the trick. Okay, so let's come back to our cream cheese. Now it's, it's creaming quite happily. So uh, just want to make sure that everything is nice and smooth before you place it into a piping bag. Now while it's still creamy, I'm going to prepare my piping bag. I've got a nozzle over here. This is a star nozzle. Okay, so uh, depending on, on this, I, I'm going to use this. Okay. okay, so every time when you place a piping nozzle, make sure uh, the piping bag is just below the V shape. See, it's not so smooth yet. How long it takes to cream really depends on how how soft your cream cheese was when you started. If the cream cheese is soft uh, and has been left on the counter for about half an hour, it uh, takes a shorter time for it to cream. So it depends. Uh, you can also go up to higher speed to expedite the process. Okay. All right. Now, if you take a look at the mixture, it's quite smooth. All right. It's quite smooth now. All right, uh, I'm going to put in the, the butter and uh, the butter helps to give it a very nice piping quality as well as to uh, further enrich, gives it, the butter added gives it another depth of uh, taste to the entire frosting. Uh, we don't want the frosting that looks good only but don't taste good. All right, so here we have got nice uh, cream cheese from Anchor and nice butter okay, using premium ingredients is always very important when you want something to taste good and not just look good okay this will take a while so I'm gonna let it cream nicely first we should do the trick okay if you take a look at it you see it's got a nice creamy yellow. If you don't want to put uh, any uh, colors, this is a nice uh, natural color. Okay, so I'm going to just leave it as it is here. And I've got my piping bag fitted with a nozzle. Okay, well, this, this particular cream is very good for uh, piping anything or even basic decoration on your cakes. And this is a great frosting for your cakes for example such as your red velvet all right cream cheese um, i love cheese so this uh, is yummy all right not just will it look good but it will taste good as well so just make sure it comes out smoothly now you see i've got my uh, mixture here i can just wipe it here first 
Okay, so I'll zigzag it like this. And, all right, to show that uh, it's got some strawberries in it, I'm going to sort of uh, cut some strawberries. You can keep some of the leaves if you want for a little bit of color. If not, you can remove them as you wish. So just cut the strawberries into like this. And just place them like this for a very simple fresh kind of look okay now we pastry chefs like to glaze the strawberries a bit with a bit of clear glaze if you're not going to consume immediately a clear glaze um, uh, can give like a little bit of shine onto the strawberry as well as helps to protect the surface of the strawberry, especially if you're going to keep it in the fridge, okay? If you leave it in the fridge, it will of course firm up a little bit. Now, if you don't wish it to firm up, you can always um, just pour before you eat or uh, just cream and then the moment it's baked, eat it right away and enjoy it, alright? So, now anyway, this is... Um, our strawberry chocolate cheese delight. I hope you will enjoy that and don't hesitate to get hold of the ingredients uh, which are all available at uh, Creative Culinary the School and uh, go ahead and make this delicious delight for your family. Thank you.